Welcome to Pacific Beer Chat number three. I'm Mike from Mike's Craft Beer. We've got Steve from Mike's Craft Beer and Terry from West Coast Beer Geek. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode because we are uh, missing two of our guys, but we're going to start talking about episodes we've been to late or events we've been to lately, some of the breweries we've been to lately, and then talk about some beer from across Canada. Why don't we start with Steve on uh, some events or uh, different things he's been doing lately. So I haven't been to doing a lot of uh, eventing lately, but uh, one of the things I've always wanted to do and still haven't had the chance to do is uh, just south of the border uh, in Leavenworth in Washington State, probably I think a four or five hour drive, they do uh, an Oktoberfest and the entire town is, it's one big tourist trap, but it looks pretty awesome. It's done up like a giant Bavarian town. It, you know, like, you know, those storybook towns you see that look like they're kind of made out of gingerbread. And so they do like this whole big Oktoberfest thing. It's one of the big events I've always wanted to go to. Um, mostly because it just looks like a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, Other than that, the only other, the one I do want to go to this summer is the um, Great Canadian Beer Fest over in Victoria. Uh uh, I've been once, and it was just a great, a good event. Um, great vibe. Everybody's pretty chill. A lot of good beer, and I'm hoping they've expanded a bit more because uh, the Victoria beer scene is still pretty vibrant. But there's so much across the street that they could bring in. Yeah. Plus, uh, you know, nothing wrong with drinking in a field every once in a while. <laughs> not that we ever do that. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Uh, those are my two big events for the next little bits. Uh, we'll see if I get to either of them, but almost certainly Great Canadian Beer Fest, at least. Nice. How about you, Terry? Yeah, I was uh, last night at uh, the Beer Craft Belgian Showcase uh, for Vancouver Craft Beer Week, and uh, our cohort here, Joe Weeb, was there too, so I was chatting with him a little bit here and there <laughs> Nice <laughs> through the night. Um and that that was uh, that's a fun one. If you ever get a chance to go, I suggest uh, signing up for that because you know they're gonna they have at least fifty Belgian beers there. Um, it's all you can drink, so it's all inclusive, which is dangerous. Yeah, go yeah. yourself. <laughs> I had really good food. They had a mashed potato bar. They had fried oysters. They had uh, lamb meatballs. Everything was included. Great staff. They know what they're doing there. A really well run event. Um, they sell a limited number of tickets, so although it gets a little crowded in there, you never have to wait for your beer, which is a big plus in mine. Nice. And uh, yeah, that was uh, other than the fact that it's held on a Monday night, <laughs> it's worked a little <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah. The next day, um, really great event. So I've I've been twice, and I'd be happy to go back again this year. And I liked it because I was comparing notes, and they had at least, you know, probably at least half the beers were. Not repeats. They brought in a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Oh, nice. Most interesting one I had uh, was a, uh, it's a Prairis Quad, but it was a barrel-aged version in uh, Asian bourbon barrels. Where's uh, that from? I can't. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Belgian brewer. Okay. Um, no I worries. cannot pronounce it for the life of me. <laughs> but, uh, on the spot. Anyway, they, their, their bottles are in stock right now, and I think they're a pretty good price. And I'm, I'm going to be on the hunt for them because it was pretty fantastic. Nice. Uh, I, I can't recall having that many um, authentic Belgian, you know, from Belgian barrel age quads. So that was pretty cool. And again, like I said, it was free pouring. So <laughs> a couple of uh, couple takes on that one. Nice. So there's that one. And then um, I'm heading down to the uh, Washington Beer Commission's uh, main festival in on Father's Day weekend, so me and my dad are, have made it a tradition to go down every year now, and uh, we, we go to the, it's actually a family event, but on Friday night, they bring out their special stuff, and it's adults only. Nice. So, that's uh, that'll be five hours of uh, imbibing, and uh, again, the thing I love about that one, you know, you look at fest tickets here, you can see what, where the taxes have an impact, because the, the fest there, it's 20 bucks to get in, and I think you get like eight or ten taster tokens with it. And the extra ones, I think, are only a buck. So That's it's it's pretty good price. It just you know you gotta pay for a hotel when you go down there because there's no way you're coming back that night. Yeah, no so doubt. That's the only thing. But, <laughs> but yeah, no good one. Last last time we uh, we went barrel hunting, there was at least fifty, I would say, barrel aged casks or whatnot there. So 
It's a good one. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah. How about you, Mike? All right. I've been doing a little bit of everything. I went up to the Great Okanagan Beer Festival in uh, early May. Amazing, amazing event right on the beach in Kelowna. It was around a man-made lagoon right down by all the hotels there um, near the Tree Beer Institute. They had all the different booths set up around the lagoon. I'm amazed no one fell in at the end of the event. (laughs) But uh, they have lots of great breweries from Metro Vancouver, from the Okanagan, a couple from the Kootenays, a couple from back east. So it was nice to actually find some beers I hadn't tried before, which is not easy for me. Um, (laughs) And it was a beautiful, beautiful warm day. Probably why everyone got a little drunker than they expected to. (laughs) It happens. And then recently I went to a tap takeover uh, Beer Thirst put on for uh, Moylan's Brewing. Uh, They're from California. Great brewery. I had no experience with their beer, but they uh, had it at the London Pub in Chinatown. And they had their barley wine, double IPA, Uh all kinds of huge beers. And then they had like, I I think it was like a pomegranate weed or something like that. A really nice fruity weed ale that was really easy drinking. That was, I think that probably ran out first. (laughs) <laughs> Which is pretty normal. How'd you like their barley? How'd you like their barley wine? I quite liked it. I've never had it before, so I can't really uh, compare it to a lot of things. But uh, quite enjoyed it. Um, oh, let me know if you ever, let me know if you ever want a few more. Oh, you didn't like it? <laughs> I'll That's take them. No, it's good. I, I can I can get it. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I might just take you up on that because I don't think the barley wine's coming to Canada, or at least not yet. Mm-hmm. And then for Vancouver Craft Beer Week. I'm co- on Friday, I'm going out to the Rookies and uh, Legends event. It's got lots of uh, well-known breweries. Hoyne, Bernie's going to be there, Central City, Phillips, Parallel 49, Yellow Dog, all kinds of guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's at 12 Kings Pub. And it should be a great time. All the beers included in that event, too. And, you know, Appies and all that are included. So I'm expecting that to be a really good, uh, good event with the Legends in BC and then some of the newer guys. Or if they're not new, they got a new space like um, Powell Street and Bridge Brewing. They're considered rookies because they got a brand new space. (laughs) And then I'm really looking forward to the East Kootenai Beer Festival. I'm going on June 20th. It's at Fairmont Hot Springs, which is a 10-hour drive from here. So it's going to be a really long weekend. But um, it's going to be great. They hold the festival itself right up at the... Um, ski resort at Fairmont Hot Springs right up in the mountains so you go up there and you do all your sampling different beers, there's a bunch of beers from Alberta that you can't get here a bunch of Kootenai breweries I think at least Bomber Brewing for Vancouver I'm not sure how many Vancouver breweries are going to be there but then you also have the Hot Springs you can enjoy so it should be a great time we'll just pause here to see what happens yeah you know uh, I was uh... oh go ahead yeah going to say um one thing i will say out of all the vancouver craft beer week events i've attended they're um pretty well run you know i mean they, they do a pretty good job of that week i got i gotta give them a shout out for doing a you know you know pricing it fairly well um you know never really have a problem with running out of beer or anything like that yeah for sure don't usually have, don't usually have long lines except for the main taster festival where you know, everyone lines up with foremans and <laughs> newer breweries and that, but yeah, for sure. No, they do a pretty good job. I mean, they look expensive at first, but then when mm-hmm. you look at the fact that usually all the beer is included, usually at least appies are included, so you can actually eat and drink all night, and not worry about shelling out more cash. Hmm. Oh yeah the the last free event I went to. Um, the one at uh, the Stone Launch, I I paid more at the end of the day for that one, <laughs> for ordering food and yeah, extra beer and stuff uh, than I did for the Belgian one. <laughs> Still a good event, <laughs> so, but oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. Yeah, no, I had a lot of had a great time, but uh, it uh, yeah, that's you know when you look at the total costs, they do a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I've been pretty happy with them. They do. So. All right, now we're done talking about the events we've been to lately. Why don't we talk about the breweries have been too lately? Why don't we go back to Steve? Uh, there you go. So, so the last couple of breweries I've been to were Moody Ales and 33 Acres. Um, I've talked about Moody Ales before. I still I still love them. 
Uh, particularly, I like uh, some of the new stuff they've been doing. They've got their um, their guest brewer series. Uh, their first one from that was the uh, matcha lemon saison, uh, which was fantastic yeah, out of the crowler. I think Mike's drinking it right now. Actually, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll give you a little visual right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crawler sized cup. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For a crowler sized man, yeah. Speaking uh, of uh, crowlers, uh, Elizabeth Station just installed a crowler uh, uh, thing in Bellingham. Just I was already in love, but now I'm more in love. <laughs> no, anyway, sorry, back to you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And, uh, and uh, lately, Liam Moody's also been doing uh, some special casks uh, that are a little more away from their usual. They've always done um, special casks of their regular lineup, like adding chocolate nibs to their porter, but they've started doing some more experimental stuff. Uh, I've gotten the chance to taste a couple of them. They're really good, but they're also really limited. So if you want to go and try them, you have to go down to the brewery and see what, see what's on tap. Follow them on Twitter and you can, you'll find out when they're going to crack open the cask. Uh, Just don't but follow it's fun. It's people because you lose it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never see any notifications at that point. And, uh, but yeah, uh, they're they're worth checking out if you want to just get a, something a little different and something you're probably never going to get again. Uh, as for 33 Acres, I just love going back there. I like the weird uh, sort of everything white, everything a little clinical sort of feel they've got going, but Ikea. still, yeah, a little a little IKEA for the furniture, <laughs> but not IKEA on the beer. There. That's true. Um, <laughs> not to mention it's stumbling distance from a friend's place, so. <laughs> it makes for a really good, easy stop. <laughs> Terry, how about you? Yeah, the uh, I was at uh, Dagger at this past weekend. Not not for their anniversary, but the day before. Uh, grabbed a growler of the Bernabarian, which is always nice. Bad timing. And uh, it's funny the, the the one the one two things I noticed there. One, um, they they started carrying the Notch coffee which is a bottled cold brew and uh, a thing called hop soda, which was fantastic. Nice. So I got some other stuff from them too, which was kind of cool. And I picked up a couple bottles of DeWitt and uh, noticed that they uh, charge a pretty pretty fair price there. I got to admit, I was actually telling them to charge more. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> <laughs> when your competition is selling it for $9 a bottle and you got it for 6 you, know, you might want to make a few more bucks there as an independent brewer. No, no, we'll just spend anyway, more money so in their brewery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's the idea, right? But uh, so anyway, it was pretty cool. And uh, if you are uh, been paying attention to their social media, they just announced that their tasting room is going to be open seven days a week. So, which is which is great because I'm usually out that way on either Tuesday or Wednesday, and they've only recently opened up uh, Wednesday, so it's great to have every day open up there. That's awesome. And then the other one, which um, I was just happenstance uh, had was there for a, a bowling swimming thing was uh bigger brew pub in uh, Richmond. And, uh, I got to admit, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> you know, they know they've got, uh, uh brewer bill as uh, he goes by. Or so Bill. Urban, bill. Right? Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff going on there. I had uh, a couple of their sours, the, uh, Chimperial stout, uh, a couple of their regular lineup there. And, uh, all of it was actually pretty decent. And I thought, um, again, got some growlers to go home with me there. And I thought the uh, kind of the, the cool thing about them is they had, you know, four regular lineup and four rotating. And I think that's fantastic for, you know, any brew pub out there. You know, first off, you should have more rotating taps on there. Just keep us craft beer geeks and other folks around there interested. You know, yeah. the thing about Moody Ales is cool because you got something new there all the time, right? Yeah. And then the other nice thing about it is if they, they have a motto, if, you, if we have it, we'll fill it. With a growler, yeah, you know, home the imperial stout. You can take home the sours, uh, which is something I have a bit of a beef with. Some places they just don't let you, you know, take uh, take home anything that they brew. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that uh, that made me excited to go back there. My favorite place, thing about that place is actually you can go bowling and drink a mild sour. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to just go drink yeah. the cheapest lager they make. You can drink a sour. You can drink a Chipotle imperial stout. You can drink a lager the if you want the Zwicka lager, but... Yeah, now, the question too. is, does your bowling skill improve even more with craft beer on tap? I've only ever tried it with crap. Who cares? Let's try it. <laughs> bowling night. 
Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually surprised more of the older bowling alleys haven't uh, tried to step up that game because that would be a good way to kind of reinvigorate them. You know, if you had a actually, cast night or the, whatever. Uh, there's a bowling alley down on Commercial. I forget the name off the top of my head, but I know they at least uh, stock Phillips Blue Buck, which is a start. They're, they're they're slowly getting there, but it's it's one of those businesses that doesn't change very easily. That's true, no. yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I can't remember. How about you, Mike? Called. All right. A uh, couple of latest ones I've been to. Um, first, let's see. Be Dome Scrap Brewing Company. If you know craft beer, you know the old Powell Street location. And um, you remember how small the tasting room used to be there. Well, it's been completely redesigned. They threw out the old design. They punched out a couple walls, and they've made a pretty decent-sized uh, craft beer lounge now. So you can actually sit there and drink a couple beer instead of just uh, 12 ounces of beer a day. Um, they're making some good beer. When I was there, they had a rye IPA, which I was totally for. I forget what the other two were right now. I think they what their regular lineup, uh, Kolsch, I think they'll always have. Yeah, Kolsch. And uh, did they did they have their alt beer? Yeah, Kolsch and alt beer. That's the other two. Yeah. But uh, it's a great space. They've uh, got a nice little bar. They do growler fills. Um, everyone should be making their way out there and checking it out. And yeah, I saw I, they bottled some stuff, too. Yeah, they eh? bottled their – I don't know if it's the – I think it's the new IPA they've made that they bottled now. Yeah. And they're going to bottle one of the other beer, one of their standard lineup as well coming up pretty soon and then on the complete other side of the spectrum i went out and visited uh red truck beer in uh the i guess the brewery creek district and holy that's quite the uh, operation they've got there they got the diner which is a nice little diner with they got a little kitchen they've got all the different beers they're brewing right now but the operation is one of the most technical out there in bc up there with central city and parallel 49 and probably Russell, too, with really big automated bottling lines and canning lines. Um, they got a red truck hanging from the ceiling. It's quite interesting. <laughs> That's uh, but, uh, <laughs> I just Most of their tanks right now, their big tanks are all dedicated to their lager. And all their smaller tanks are dedicated to their ISAs, their IPAs, and all the different one-offs they're doing. And I hope they can kind of transition to putting the lager in some of the smaller tanks and using the bigger tanks for their uh, more interesting, more exciting beer. But that's just me. <laughs> no, I'm with, oh, I'm with you there. <laughs> you know what I, ju I just realized? We were talking about breweries we just, we've just we been to. I've been to House Sound like three times in the last month. <laughs> there we go. I was there the other day too. <laughs> just a, <laughs> um, yeah, I've been climbing a lot and, uh, you know, go to House Sound afterwards. So. So uh, they've actually started up their own uh, seasonal and rotating tap that you can't get bottled. They got uh, rye IPA. That's I had that. blinded me. It was very tasty. Hey, it's actually it's really good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, actually, I I don't know why I always forget about them, but they're I mean they have such a huge line of beers, and I like that they're starting to break out a, out a little more and uh, start doing just some small batch seasonals that they're going to just have at the, at the brew pub. Yeah. And, have you been to uh, their, uh, their super Jupiter right now? <laughs> have you been to their devil's elbow uh, location? Downtown? I have. I uh, went with Mike to the opening. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice place. Yeah. Great food. That's a really nice yeah. place. I love the fact was, that they had uh, Billy Bugger on tap when I was there. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the um, yeah, I went there for a taster tray and uh, happy hour, and I ordered the happy hour food. And you know, when you order happy hour food, you expect the little plate, and yeah. you know, you know, you get a discount. Well, man, they they aren't kidding around there. Nice. I was uh, I could I could only eat about half of what I ordered, and I can, I can eat. <laughs> so <laughs> so can I, I was like, oh, this is this is pretty good. You know, this is uh, they're not your typical Vancouver. Uh, sort of setup where you get, you know, food on something that's this big when you pay six dollars for yeah. it. So I will yeah. definitely go back there. I was pretty I was pretty happy with it. I'm actually yeah. looking forward to seeing what happens too with uh RB Brewing that was bought out by House Sound mm -hmm. because that's throwing a whole new wrench in it too. And I mean yeah. once they uh, once they announced that purchase, then you had Central City announce that they uh, bought the old Dick's location right across from uh, BC Place too. 
So there's a lot of things happening really right now downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope Central City does a few more seasonals because of that. Because that's that's the one thing. I mean, they do have them at their brew pub, um, but but they don't have anything. You know, it's mostly their regular lineup. I would say. Yeah. At least that I, at least that I've seen. You know, it was good. All really good beer. But I would like to see them kind of delve a little bit more into the seasonal. seasonal yeah, just beers. to get you know, get you a little more excited when you look for look past uh, the Red Racer brand on the shelves. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you always just go, yeah, yeah, seen it, seen it, seen it. Yeah, I've had it, had it. <laughs> it's good, good stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah well, I'm not gonna complain. Buy it again, but yeah. you know, just shake it up a little. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. there was rumors there'd be a lot of sours coming out of the location. That might just be rumors, but we'll see what happens. No, they have a they have a huge huge souring room. Oh, no. lots of barrels. They they have that souring room at the brewery in Surrey, but there was actually mm-hmm. rumors that that brew pub itself would have a lot of sours coming at it too. But oh, interesting. That could just be rumors that are unfounded. I don't know. Yeah, last time I went by there, they had ripped out all the brewing equipment, at least as far as I could tell. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know if they're expanding the restaurant or not. But... I have, we'll have to ask him. It's been so long since <laughs> I've been there because it's been closed for so long. <laughs> the, I just remember the poutine at Dix was amazing. <laughs> Actually, Dix was the <laughs> Dix was the very first place that I was introduced to cask beer because of Steve bringing me there. Oh yeah, that's right. That was our first cask night. <laughs> yes, it was. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, that was a bit of a gong show, if I remember. <laughs> No comment. All right, we should probably move on. Let's move <laughs> we on. We should yeah. probably move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were gonna kind of talk about different beers we're excited about across Canada. You know, things we've tried from different provinces, and it may not be available in BC. You may have to bring it in yourself. But interesting, you. What about you, Terry? Yeah, probably the most interesting ones. I, you know, the ones that we can get here are the Quebec ones. You know, you've got uh, True to Diablo, uh, Due to CL. You still get the odd thing from Unibrew that's nice. I mean, their regular lineup's great. I, I don't mind. I, I like them. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of their, their uh, the Grand Reserve, the, the 17. Yeah. And then, um, and then uh, what is it? The Trois? Oh, I, can't, I can never pronounce it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're um, yeah. yeah, that's the one. They uh, they bring in some nice beer as well. So yeah. I always look for those on the shelves, and every now and then we get the barrel age uh, due to CLs out here. And uh, my parents were just in Montreal there. They they didn't bring any due to CL back, but they said the the uh, the bar was was uh, quite quite fun. <laughs> I bet <laughs> going in there and trying all those beers at at once there. And uh, just on that topic, I am drinking uh, Unibrew's uh, La Resolution. I've never it's actually that. Uh, their Christmas. It's one of their. It's a Christmas beer release. Uh, I I tend to hold on to these uh, oh, these heavily spiced ones and let them tone down a little bit and drink them a little closer to the summer. And this is actually pretty nice. I'm uh, I'm liking it. It's the first time I've had it. But I uh, I had uh, read some reviews before people talking about it being very heavily spiced. So I thought I would just let it sit for a while and open it up now. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense and then uh, I had a uh, had a Great Lakes um, Thrust IPA, which is one of the top rated ones there. Recently, paired it with some uh, Oka cheese. So I'm looking forward to writing that up. That was pretty pretty delightful. And uh, yeah, beyond that, I don't really get much other stuff. I mean, you know, Mill Street's pretty popular and get their beer. Yeah. Um, and I would like to see more stuff from Alberta. I know there's a lot of good craft breweries opening up, and I really wish we could get a hold of some of their beer. Yeah, I wish too. And then every now and then Mike here. hooks me up. Every now and then Mike hooks me up with some uh, some half pints. <laughs> yeah, I've got my connections. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I oh, just got to off first. Um, uh, actually, I'm kind of with you. The Quebec Wa stuff is really sort of what's uh, has been exciting me lately. Uh, Again, the Unibrew and the Trois Pistol and stuff like that. Um, I always, I keep hoping Toronto is actually going to develop more of a scene than it has, uh, or at least that I hear about here. Or I, it's huge. You'd expect them to somewhere. Someone's going to start coming up with something. And, but yeah, I think yeah. I think with their expansion of the the new private stores, 
um, that they keep talking about the new craft beer specialty stores. I, I think that might spur some might growth. I hope, I hope it does. Yeah, I certainly hope so too. Um, sorry, I just, I just got to step off here for a sec. Uh, if you guys finish up, just let me know. No problem. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I guess uh, for me, okay, my... one of the ones that really excites me is Half Pints in Winnipeg. I've got a, a good connection, so I can get almost every single one of their releases, including some of their uh, specialty uh, one-off um, growler fills, uh, usually at my place within a week. <laughs> the ones that are really excited about are they've got a imperial barrel aged stout called Le Temps Noir, which is to die for. It's only made once a year. Um, I still think I have one bottle of it in my cellar. Um, they make some other great beers. I, I love the one beer. They've only made it once, I think, now, and the next release is in the works, but they're just waiting for it to come up properly. Is their Old Red Barn, which is a sour a barrel aged sour and uh it was amazing um it was so limited to be released it was so hard to get yet i still got a bottle in vancouver <laughs> nice i've got the right friends <laughs> it's owned by russell brewing in surrey fort gary in winnipeg makes an ipa i really liked and i wish i could get more of there uh, it's portage in maine they make a, it's a great ipa lots of flavor uh, other ones, probably one that it used to get a growler or two from was um, Lake of the Woods Brewing in Kenora, Ontario. It's a brew pub. They only do growler fills, but um, they make some great beer, and I'm hoping to get some more of their beer in the near future, I hope. Uh, hopefully they're making some new uh, seasonals, but we'll see. Um <laughs> Tried Tool Shed when they were still being brewed out of Dead Frog in Surrey while they were building their brewery in Alberta. And I'd love to try some more of their beer, and I wish they'd actually ship it to BC. <laughs> we'll see what yeah, happens. Yeah, no kidding. And um, <laughs> going up to the uh, the brew fest in the East Kootenays, and there's a couple different um, couple different breweries that are coming from Alberta that I've never heard of. I think there's like Last Best Brewing. And some other ones, and I'm really looking forward to trying them. But uh, that, that's it for me. Um, anything else, Terry? Yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's any other. Again, I think it's it's one of those things where we're, I think we're all in the same boat. We'd like to see more of it. You know, like to see the Toronto scene grow. And I mean, I, I don't know if I it'd be good if they start sending their IPA out here. Cause it's well, does crumb, it need to grow prospect. though really, or does it just need to ship more to Canada or in this side of Canada? Because I think it, I think they have more, I think it, I think it Ontario. needs to Look grow. I think it needs to grow just in the fact that, I mean, if they can support, I think they have most of the biggest population there, right? Yeah. So they need to be able to produce more that they need to send it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not a lot of beer comes cross country. But and usually that, for usually for good reason. <laughs> but the, is the that a problem with just um, our stupid laws in Canada that make it hard to ship beer across provincial lines legally? I mean, it's easy to bring it across if you're just uh, going across for a holiday, grabbing some beer or wine or whatever, bringing it back, or if you got a friend that's leaving and bringing back beer for you. But you have mm -hmm. to get a distribution company to buy the beer, bring it across the provincial line, almost like you are with. United States, and it's probably easier to mm -hmm. bring it from Washington or Oregon or California or anywhere than it is to bring it across the Alberta border or Ontario border or anything like that. Yeah, no, I, that's likely the case. <laughs> Usually, is our government tax that uh, hits yeah. us the most, which is unfortunate, and you know it's preventing uh, a lot of business growth for Canadian companies, which is silly. Yes, it is. Uh, anyway. <laughs> We digress. Yeah, exactly. Basically, we want more. We want more variety and more beer to drink. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. All right. Anything else? Yeah. We should bring no, up, and then, uh, no, no. That's it for me. Um, well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing if we get some more stuff. Um, seems to be quite a bit of uh, Washington stuff. You know, newer. I know Red Hook's coming, which wasn't really that exciting. 
but uh, I am excited to see Moylan's back. They're, Moylan's. they're a pretty good brewer. And there's uh, been some Laurel other interesting Wood's stuff. Back. Yeah, yeah, Laurel Wood's nice. They don't do a lot of seasonals, but you know their mainstay is pretty good. And um, oh, they, there was just a new of batch the... of Cascade Brewing Company that just came up from Oregon. I think it was a raspberry that just oh, came nice. up, and maybe an apricot. I can't remember. I saw the West Coast Liquor uh, Carisdale was posted pictures. Yeah, that's nice to see Cascade up here. Yeah, they're a, they're a wonderful brewery. If you can afford likes... the almost forty dollar uh, price tag. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about doing just a drive down there. I mean, at the end of the day, Cascade's only five hours away. <laughs> five hours, yeah. And I'm driving ten hours to a beer festival. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. No, I'm good. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, I guess uh, we'll wrap it up. Steve's not back yet, but I think uh, we're good. So uh, until uh, episode four, uh, have a good one. Yeah. Thank you.